we're back in the shop. We had a nice Wednesday off. Popped a video out, but here's another video. Got loads of jobs to do today. I don't really have time to film this, to be quite honest, but I'm going to anyway. Loads of orders have come in. I've got tons of boxes of magic and Pokemon and all sorts to put out. I've just got the card sorted for eBay. So I'm going to show you those um, and then I'll show you some parcels we've sold as well a little bit later in the video. We've had a whole bunch of cards go out, including a few Digimon cards. Uh, there's four of these and four of these going to the same person. They went for £22. One of this card went for six and then another two went for 11. Now, each of those cards were bought in bulk for one peer card, so that's really good return on investment. Then we have a collectible Master Collection 2 Blowback Dragon here. That's a secret rare one. Uh, a little bit rarer these than the normal ones. That went for £45. Then we had a, another secret rare, Psychic End Punisher. That's from a newer set. That went for 15 Then another secret rare, Pot of Desires. That went for 22 a Dimensional Fissure, another one, went for six, that one on its own though. And then a special Arena Land Forest from Magic the Gathering. They used to be given away as a prize. This depicts that they were a prize card. We've ended up with that out of someone's collection. A Sacred Foundry for 15, or just under 15. An Elemental Hero Gaia for 750. They're still selling really well. A Rite of Replication from Magic for five. A Sanguine Bond for five, and then two Pokemon cards, an Arceus V-Star Secret Rare Gold, and a Trainer Gallery Mimikyu V. I got this in the trade the other day in store. Someone bought a bunch of cards in and took one of the cards we got off Joe, added some money and added these cards. So that's good, one of those gone. That covers the money he used to trade in against the card. And we have some extra cards to sell as well on top of that. So we should make an extra sort of like 10 or 15 pound on that sale. So that's good as well. So that's a whole bunch of cards totaling 230 pounds and a few pence. A few moments later. We had a positively busy weekend, which was great. Loads of people up playing cards. Loads of people in the store. It was actually awesome. It's a new week now, so we've been listing an absolute ton of cards on eBay. So the first job I've got to do today is get all of the cards into their boxes. We've got some Digimon, we've got some Yu-Gi-Oh! and we've got some Pokemon and we've got some Magic the Gathering to pack away. There's probably over 150 cards here to pack away. So I've got to organise those, get them packed away, get them sorted and then I've got to get the packing done for today. Only 20 items in the end over the weekend. So quite a quiet weekend on eBay, but it's sales moving out, which is great. See you in a moment. So here are all the cards we sold over the weekend. So we've got a couple of Digimon cards, this Flower Cannon Hollow that went for eight, a Tai Kamiya promo that went for 30, some Capture Energy that went for nine, a Thought Seize Magic the Gathering card that went for 17. This Rise Greymon went for about five. Then we had a couple of common, uncommon cards that went for three pound 50, a Mayor of Averbrook that went for five, some more quick balls, Noah Punk Dino that went for five, this Dynamorphia that went for nine, a Shiny Vault Dub Wall that went for five, this Missworm, I think this went for 12, could have been a bit more. Uh, this guy went for about 12 as well, I think. Uh, we have this Floorgrass EX that went for £3.50 and a Stomping Ground that went for around 11. And that's all the cards. As promised, here are the items that we sold over the weekend, as well as the cards. So we have some Blood Bowl dice in here. I'll pop a picture up here for you. These went for £35. These are a slightly older dice set, uh, but you can generally find these in Games Workshops just hanging around on shelves. Uh, as, you know, pick them up for, I think they the RRP on these was around about a tenner when they first came out. They are quite slow sellers, but uh, we've gone through quite a few of these now. We've still got quite a few listed as well, but they're always a good thing to look out for and pick up. We also had another Flux go out as well. This was Pirate Flux. This went for £15, I believe. Uh, we have a multi-listing of these, and every time they sell out, we just restock them from our supplier and get them sold. Up now, we have a One Piece starter deck. This is another One Piece starter deck. Again, this one went for £24.99, plus postage. They're going really well at the moment. I don't think it'll be long before we sell out. They're just over here. We've got them in the store at £9.99, but they're still selling on eBay for £24.99. 
This one's got global shipping. Uh, so as long as we get that to the global shipping center, that one will be completely covered. And last but not least, we have these cordless phones here. Always pick these up at car boots if they're cheap enough. Uh, I think these ones went for about 30 pound, maybe 35 pound. They tend to sit around for a little while, but eventually they do sell, always pretty much. You can normally get around 15 pound for a one handset, 20 pound for a two handset and 30 pound for a three handset of most brands. Obviously some of those can be a lot more expensive uh, but just do your research and you should be fine. So there we go. That is all our parcels for today. I'm going to go and get on with some other jobs now. Uh, what will that be, I wonder? Next job is to get all of these listed cards into their folders and boxes ready for storage. We've got a whole bunch of Digimon. We've got all these cards listed last week or over the past week. We've got some Magic the Gathering there. We've got a whole bunch of Pokemon. We've got some commons and uncommon play sets that are quite desirable. Most of these were bought in bulk and we've got like literally tons and tons of V's and secrets and all sorts of stuff in there to get uh, stored away, ready for when they sell on eBay. It's the next day, I'm back in the shop. I've got a fair few jobs to get on with today. I've got to do a games workshop order. There'll be some more packing to do as well. I haven't checked my eBay this morning, so hopefully we'll have some banging sales on there. Uh, I'm not too hopeful though. I'll probably have about 10 sales if I'm lucky. And then we've got to get on with some other jobs, more cleaning up, more sorting. But one of my biggest issues at the moment as a reseller is car boot season starting. And I never cleared my death pile. My death pile is stupid. There is so much stuff in it. I just keep getting bought more and more and more stuff as well. And however much I list, I just cannot list stuff quick enough. Now, I know a lot of you are sitting out there thinking, well, why don't you just employ someone to list stuff? Uh, I don't want to employ anyone else. Uh, there are lots of problems that come with employing someone, not paying them. That's not necessarily an issue. But then you've got to spend time teaching them and training them and getting them ready. And I just really don't have time to do that. So we will endeavour to list as much as we can before the car boot season starts properly. I will probably go to car boots this year. Probably. But if I do, I will only be picking up very rare things and things that are worth an awful lot of money that I can buy very cheap. I will try not to be tempted by smalls and things like that. However, if I do see some smalls that are easy to flip in the cabinets and stuff, I'll probably just pick them up. Last week alone, I was bought three or four collections of Warhammer. I think I've had four collections of cards in as well. People shifting their hobbies, some people getting rid of for good and some people just trading in for store credit. So we definitely aren't running out of things and we're definitely getting regular things in to resell, but we all like the car boot hunt. So I will be getting down the car boots, but maybe I won't be as on it as I used to be. As usual this week, we've had a bunch of items bought into store, either for trading or cash. Nothing unusual this week, mainly Warhammer and collectible card sets or single cards. Uh, most of the cards are at home getting ready to be listed. Uh, we do most of our listing at home for those because it's just easier. We don't get disturbed all the time. And then all the Warhammer stays in the shop and then I just basically have to filter through it, price it all up, see if it's worth listing on eBay or whether we can put it in the shop or whether we can have it on both platforms to be quite honest. So I thought I'd show you what we picked up and just talk to you a little bit about it. So this first collection was bought in by a regular customer. These are some projects he was going to work on, uh, but has obviously uh, decided that's not for him. And he traded all these figures in with us uh, for some store credit. I normally tend to ask people what they're looking for price wise, because if they can give me a price, I can quite quickly gauge whether I can work with that. Sometimes it's hard to make offers because you don't want to be too low but obviously you've got to be as low as you can to make a profit uh, and the lower you offer the better profit you make but you don't want to kind of insult someone and sometimes you can make too high an offer and they would have accepted a lot less so if a person can tell you what they want that gives you something to work with straight away now the guy that we bought these off is a regular in store he's done us some very good deals in the past uh, he's currently painting an in-store army for us as well and uh I was pleased that he came to us with these because there's a few unusual models in here and his painting is quite good as well. I would say particularly good. So we can probably ask a bit more for this guy. He told me he wanted £80 store credit for this lot and I was pretty happy to give it to him. 
uh, without even really checking anything because there's some easy easy money back there for us we'll make a profit on top of the models we let him trade in for and um yeah there's some just some nice models here some that we can't get anymore and some that are a little bit difficult to get and some other people can benefit from that and then the painted one we can stick on ebay and try and get some more for that i've got some bases as well so that's quite interesting they're a little bit different as well so we can sell those in store so that was the first lot this is the second bunch of Warhammer I was bought in. Now, this isn't quite as sorted as the other bunch. I had to go through all of this, separate the models into units or squads. We've got some metal models. We've got some parts of some Chaos Warriors there. We've got some parts of some Goblin Wolf Riders here. We've got some more of Goblin Wolf Riders here. There's a little bit of Lord of the Rings in here. Some older Chaos models like these Knights. Some more Lord of the Rings metal models there. We've got a Chaos Chariot in here somewhere as well. And then we've got a Tomb King Lord. We haven't made an offer on these yet. Uh, this one could be fairly expensive. So I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm not sure what these are kind of priced at at the moment. Um, so I need to do a little bit of research on this. It's been left with us. So we've got plenty of time to have a look through that. Everything's bagged up and separated now. So the guy, I'm pretty sure he wants store credit. So we'll be able to make a little bit of a better offer if he's not taking cash. Uh, so that'll benefit him and us. And that'll be quite nice. Now, some of these will have to go on eBay because they are older models. I don't think they'll sell in store. So these older models here, they'll be an eBay job. The Chaos Knights will probably be an eBay job along with the Chariot. Uh, and the Lord of the Rings plastic should be able to go in here with the Wolf Riders and that kind of thing. They shouldn't be an issue. This guy might have some value though, so he'll probably end up on eBay because uh, he might be a little bit too pricey in the store. And yeah, we'll just have to see how that one goes. So that's the second lot. And then there's this third lot coming up that I just want to show you as well. Now, anytime someone brings you in a old box like this, you can generally tell it's going to be something old. Now, the giveaway is kind of obvious what it is. But if you were to see these old mail order boxes down a car boot you know you're probably going to be getting some older metal models now i know the gent that sold this to me he was a regular in the store many years ago and he's told me that he's going to keep bringing me stuff in over the next few months so we can buy it off him uh, and these are basically some old metal necron models so these are the first necron models that games workshop produced We've got a whole bunch of warriors, scarabs, destroyers. We've got like a, a wraith there. There's a lord in here somewhere. There he is. Immortals, which are like the bigger ones. And that was pretty much the entire range of the Necrons back in the day. So they would have been probably early 90s, um, early to mid 90s when they were released. And they just, that was it. That was, that was your whole whole army basically like four different models five different models yeah destroyers warriors immortals wraiths well scarabs and the necron lord so six different models all pretty much the same pose so that's your warrior poses and then uh, your immortals were all the same your wraiths were pretty much all the same and your lords were all the same but they're just quite exciting models to get. Now, these have quite a good resale value. You can do your own research and see what they sell for. But the um, the Warriors will go in units. The Immortals will go in units. The Destroyers will probably go in a unit as well. Unit of 10 Warriors, unit of 5 Immortals. The Wraith can go on its own. And the Destroyers will probably be in uh, a unit of 5. Yeah, pretty pleased with that. Some really good resale value and some great nostalgia there. These will not sell in the shop very well. They have quite good value. So these will all be going on eBay over the coming weeks just to get rid of those. And then we look forward to see what else we get brought from this collection. So that was just free trade-ins in store. One was a store credit trade-in for more products, which are great for us always. The second one still to be decided. And the third one I just showed you was a cash purchase. Now we got a quite good deal on that but there's lots and lots of stuff coming in. So we're gonna be paying up a lot of money for a rather large collection. I've been told the next lot coming in will probably be 30 tanks and we'll be looking at paying between eight and 10 pound per tank for that. So 
Not sure when they're coming, but they will be coming along soon. There we go. That is everything. That is everything that we bought last week, Warhammer wise. I also bought some Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering collections. I won't be showing those. All of those cards have gone home to be listed. So we're just dealing with them as and when. There will be a card later that I'll show you that we are getting ready to list along with some other items that we found out have gone up in price. So I just had to go downtown very quickly to deliver a parcel that came through that we wanted to get dispatched today. Don't want to get any of those late deliveries or anything like that. So we, as I was going downtown, I thought I'd pop into the two charity shops directly on the way. One of them is the British Heart Foundation. That one's always generally quite expensive. There are some bits in there, but nothing I can make any real money on so I thought I'd give that a miss and I moved on to one of the local charity shops where I always generally find a little bit so I went in there had a little look around and found these three items which I'm going to show you now first up couldn't miss this guy Mr Blobby now I'm not sure if this is an official Mr Blobby or someone's made this but if they have they've made it quite well he does need a bit of a wash uh, he's got no tags or anything like that but he was only three pounds so I thought I'd give him a pick up because i I don't think it will be a hard sell, to be quite honest. Even at £20, I reckon we'll probably get that. I couldn't find any of this particular one listed on eBay or sold, uh, and I haven't really done a lot of research, but I thought for £3 we could easily turn that into 20 quid. If he doesn't go on eBay, he can definitely go in the shop uh, and be in addition to the shop. So there we go, there's Mr Blobby. £3 into probably 20 I would assume, maybe 30 if you're lucky on eBay. That was, good. that was going to be all I picked up, to be honest. And then I noticed this sitting on the shelf, uh, KS1. So I looked it up to see what it was. Turns out it's some sort of massage ball for after exercise. This was a pound. I did a quick eBay search because I didn't really want to spend a pound if it was worth a two or three quid. And noticed there was quite a few of these ones listed at around 30 pounds. I didn't even bother opening it and taking a look. Um, but most of them seem to be around 10 to sort of 30 pound. So I thought I'd take a punt on it. And when I got back to the store, it was actually this one. So a pound into maybe 30. I couldn't see any solds on this one, uh, but there was definitely some listed at over 30 pound posted. And then last but not least, not very good with the clothing, but I did manage to pick up this Plymouth Argyle football shirt. This is a 2019-2020 away shirt. Um, no name on the back or anything like that but I have seen people achieving around about 30 to 35 pound for used ones of these um, and uh, about 40 pound, 45 pound for tagged ones. Uh, this is in really nice condition. Um, no rips or tears or holes or anything like that. It doesn't look like it's had any stretching. I'm not sure what size it is. Large, so good size as well. So I can't see that hanging around for long. Paid three pound for that. So that should turn into 30 pound at least so we're looking at probably 30 40 50 maybe 20 for this on the conservative side so seven pounds spent into 70 pound maybe so not bad for a little jaunt down the charity shop always worth looking in the charity shops you never know what you might find so i very often get messages and phone calls and emails and facebook messages about cards do you have this card i need this card have you got these cards and yesterday, or a couple of days ago, I got messaged by a regular customer who said, hey, have you got any of these cards? I need them fairly quickly for, uh, for a deck I'm making. So I was like, yeah, I'm sure I've got those. So I went to the box, dug them out, looked up the prices, and I was like, oh my God, these are very, very expensive compared to what they used to be. These cards were pennies. So obviously there's been a shift in the meta or these cards have become popular because another card has been released in a set and the price has just gone up very quickly from nothing to £15 a card and we had a wedge of them. So we've taken them all out. I'll flip the camera around, show you what the cards are. We've got them all listed very quickly because the price has gone up again. So I want to get these listed as quick as possible because the price may drop very quickly as well. So I'll flip the camera around and show you what they are. I will apologise for the screen recording here because I'm just recording off my phone because I don't really have time to do a screen recording. But these are the cards in question. So you've got their Gishki cards, their Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and these were all worthless about a week or two ago. Uh, just these ones here. Now we have drafted these at the moment. Uh, so ignore the price because we haven't put the right prices in. Always draft them at just off another listing. But you can see we've got 
12 of those, 11 of those, 22 of those, two of those and 15 of those. These shot up to around about 25 pound each and we got like 25 of those nearly to list. And then all these ones shot up to about 15 each and we've got about, well, I think we had about 40 of those between them. Um, yeah, 20, 30, 45. I'm not sure if the price has gone up again. I'm not sure if it's dropped. I'm not sure if they're selling. I've got to do a bit more research, but I definitely wanted to get those up quickly. We sold the set to him for a good deal just because he kind of let us onto it. So we did that. They've been sent off and that's all been paid for. That was a private sale, so no need to use eBay or anything. And then uh, we've just listed some other cards. We got this uh, here, this Starlight Blackwing Dragon. We got that in a trade-in on the weekend. Uh, these are some old cards that someone asked us to dig out but decided not to have, but these are quite pricey. They're ultimate rare bamboo shoots. We need to get those listed. And then this was another trade-in. A guy bought in some cards to trade in for some Warhammer products. And this was in the collection he traded in. Uh, so we've got that one listed as well. So yeah, all in all, not a ton of listings, but a few. Uh, I like to get up at least a few every day at the moment. Obviously, you saw earlier in the video all of those cards that we got listed last week. There must have been over 100, 150 listings there. And I've been slowly putting on things over the past few weeks, some of which you have seen sold on my Instagram. Things like this and this. Every time I get something, I just try and list it as quickly as I can because obviously the death pile is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But not an issue. You know, that's part of reselling. Uh, I'd rather have a big death pile to keep listing rather than nothing to list. That can be a problem. Not a huge amount of listings, but there are multi-quantity listings here. All those Gishiki cards alone come to somewhere between 800 and 1200 pounds. That's a whole bunch of inventory on. They literally would have cost us next to nothing. They would have been either cards that were left open from packs we opened a long, long time ago. We generally only open sets if there's some high-end cards in there where we can make our money back quickly. Uh, I find opening sets can be really risky sometimes not making your money back but these ones uh, would have had some cards in at the time were very popular so we were probably cracking lots of cards selling lots of cards and then getting left with effectively junk cards uh, that we would have been selling for like 50p or a pound these have ended up in the back stock just sitting there and now they've become good again so we can get those listed and hopefully make some money keep the shop open for a few more weeks eh uh, and then the other ones we can just uh, drift those out each of those other cards should net us a little bit of money as well because they're quite collectible rather than sort of playable although some are playable as well uh, but they are definitely collector's items especially the ultimate rares and the starlight rare don't get very many of those per box and ultimate rares they've actually stopped producing now unless they're from a tournament pack and there's generally only three cards in each tournament pack that are ultimate rare now um, and you can only get those if you go to organized play stores and play in their tournaments or leagues that they run we run a Yu-Gi-Oh league every Saturday where you can pay £5 to play all day and you get three of those packs just for sort of turning up and uh, then you can pull a very expensive card if you're very lucky. So I just spent the last of the day listing this football t-shirt which I literally know nothing about although there was a really good website called Kit Archive. I was just able to put in the football club which is Plymouth Argyle Football Club and then it came up with all their kits and all the information I needed about them. I have seen one of these sell for around £35 plus postage. I have seen one of these sell for £3 plus postage on bids. So I've aimed at 35 with best offers. Um, I paid £3, so, you know, I'd be happy taking anywhere from £20 up on that, to be quite honest. And then this massage ball, they are listed at 30 to 35 on eBay posted, but I couldn't find any sold comps on these. I have to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time looking but I listed at 25 plus postage. Again, I paid a pound for this, so I could be quite happy selling right down to 15 pound on this one. But if I get the 25 and the 35, I'll be really happy with that. The Mr. Blobby's gone home to be washed, uh, so hopefully we'll get him back in a few days and then we can pop him out. And depending on how he turns out, we'll probably change the price depending on that. So yeah, that's it, that's, that's, a, that's my stuff done for today. So yeah, that's it, that's it, that's the video done. I'm. Um, I'm going to call that a day. Hopefully there'll be a lot of information on this video. If you did enjoy the video, remember to leave me a like and a subscribe. And there's going to be some links here to watch some other videos if you fancy it. It's not much of your time and you might learn something. Cheers.